What a better way of celebrating GSM Arena's 15th birthday than taking a trip down memory lane. Dealing away with today's slabs of metal and steel, we invited over a private collector with his collection of hundreds of mobile phones in order to show you how phones have changed through the years. His collection surely is not as exhaustive as it could be, but what we have today is more than enough to guide you through the milestones of 15 years worth of mobile phone history. The Siemens S4 is the oldest phone in this collection. It had come out some 5 years before our website was even around. This model was sold with a charging cradle for mounting it on a car's dashboard. The external car antenna improved reception immensely. It was quite some years before the external antenna connector finally disappeared from mobile phones altogether. The Ericsson GA628 combined traditional phone design with unmatched back then customizability. It was the first time that you could change the keypad backplate with another one. This way you could add some style and a personal touch to your brick of a phone. The GA628 shared the same hardware platform with a number of other Ericsson smartphones such as the GH688, which we also happen to have around. Around that time, a legendary phone was born. The Motorola StarTac was the first clamshell phone and it sold in 60 million units even though it was originally selling for around 1000 US dollars. The Nokia 6110 is the first of many Nokia 6000 series business oriented phones and it was certainly a landmark device. It's the first Nokia phone to have a graphical icon menu. It's also the first to come with an infrared port to connect to a computer. And it's also the first phone from Nokia to come with the snake game. Remember that? It also became famous for its color that would change shades under a different light. The Nokia 6150 was a slightly updated version of the Nokia 6110 and it was equally popular. A curious fact is that the 6110 came to replace the Nokia 2110 from 1994. And while we don't have that one to show you, it's worth noting that the Nokia 2110 is actually the phone that introduced the Nokia tune. Yep, that tune is more than 20 years old now. The Nokia 5110 shared the same hardware platform as the 6110. It was a phone designed with a younger and more fashion conscious audience in mind. It had translucent keys and with the express on covers you could change the look of the phone instantly. That really put in motion the mobile accessory market which literally skyrocketed in the early 2000s, helped nonetheless by the advent of the Nokia 3310. The original Matrix movie debuted in 1999 and it featured a banana shaped Nokia handset. The phone for the movie was based on the Nokia 8110 which we have here today. However, Nokia never had the 8110 with a spring loaded key cover that can slide out upon a press of a button. At least not until the Nokia 7110 appeared the following year. Nokia was not afraid to experiment with the form factor even back in 1998. But that same year German manufacturer Bosch already had a phone with a key cover that you can open at the press of a button. It was the Bosch Com 908 and while it was Motorola that came up with this form factor in the first place, it wasn't until Ericsson picked up the flip cover form factor next year that it became a true hit. The first phone with a color display came out in 1998. It was the Siemens S10 and its screen could only visualize four colors but it was nonetheless considered a breakthrough. The same year saw the release of the Siemens S10 Active, which was Siemens first of many phones with enhanced shock, dust and splash protection. The Nokia 3210 was one of the hallmark Nokia phones and it had a huge success among the younger crowd. It was one of the first phones with an internal antenna design and it also allowed for both the front and back panel to be changed with different ones. The Nokia 7110 was at the other end of the spectrum, being Nokia's flagship product at that time and as some call it the most desirable phone on the planet. It had a huge screen, a spring-loaded key cover like that prop phone from the Matrix movie and the first ever WAP browser which allowed you to check the weather, flight information and also basic WAP sites. Again in the same year Ericsson came out with the T28, the slimmest and lightest phone on the market back then. It had voice dialing and a flip that opened on the press of a button. We don't have that one to show you but the Ericsson T10 was Ericsson's more affordable version of this design, although it wasn't nearly as thin. The Siemens C25 and S25 became quite popular at that time. The S25 was Siemens' first dual band phone and also had an infrared port. In that same year their fellow Germans over at Bosch came out with a unique styling for their Bosch 909. It was also probably one of the first phones with a blue screen backlighting. Nokia's first phones with blue backlight came out a year later. Those were the Nokia 8250 and the Nokia 8890. The Sony Ericsson 380S was a high-end device that combined cell phone duties with a PDA functionality. The latter being a huge buzzword back then. It was the first device ever to use the Symbian OS, though at that time it didn't allow installing any apps. The R380 had a black and white touchscreen display, partially covered by a flip, and it could connect to the internet so you can check your email. It was introduced in the year 2000, and it was about that time that GSMarena.com was first set up. 
The Ericsson R320S is another Ericsson phone that we have from this year. It's a super slim phone with an attachable belt clip and it was targeted at business users. There are certainly other phones that came out in the year 2000 which deserve our attention but unfortunately they are not part of this collection. The Nokia 3310 came out around that time and it quickly became a smash hit, although it sold in slightly lower numbers than the 3210. The Ericsson R310S was the company's first waterproof phone and even if not a sales record holder, it certainly did make for an impressive in-store demo. The Sony CMD J5 had a unique jog dial for navigating the menus and by having a high resolution graphical display, polyphonic ringtones and innovative mobile games, it certainly stood out in the crowd. The Zemus SL42 is a remake of the original Zemus SL45, which was launched a year earlier as the first phone to play MP3 music tracks. Both phones have an MMC memory card slot, a storage media format that's now obsolete. This one had 60 megabytes worth of storage on the card. The Ericsson T65 was a highly popular model and intriguingly is the first mobile phone with a sealed battery. The only way you can get your battery changed was in a service center. The year 2001 certainly saw lots of phone releases. The fashionable Nokia 8310, which was the first Nokia with FM radio. There also was the business-minded Nokia 6310, which was quite popular and not to mention the unique Nokia 5510 with its full QWERTY keyboard. The Ericsson T66 was Ericsson's smallest phone yet, weighing only 59 grams, while the Ericsson T68 was the first phone ever with a proper color screen, an LCD STN unit with 256 color rendition. It's also one of Ericsson's last phones before the joint venture with Sony. And finally, the Ericsson T39, which came out that same year, was the first ever to have Bluetooth capabilities. The first product of the Sony Ericsson joint venture was the T68i, an upgraded version of the T68. It didn't have a built-in camera, but the company used to sell a snap-on camera add-on for it. The Sony Ericsson P800 was the company's first smartphone and it had a PDA-like touchscreen, operated with a stylus. Its screen could display up to 4096 colors. It came with Sony's proprietary memory stick card slot. A 60 megabyte card was included back in the day. Both the Sony Ericsson T68i and the P800 made the headlines when they were featured in the 2002 James Bond movie Die Another Day. The highlight feature of the Nokia 5210 are its splash-proof rubber express on shells which you assembled in a rather unique way. The Nokia 6100 was a popular mid-range phone and it's no surprise. It is Nokia's lightest phone ever with a weight of only 76 grams. It also has a screen capable of displaying up to 4096 colors. The Panasonic GD55 is probably the smallest and lightest full-feature phone we have in our database to date. It weighs a mere 65 grams and it's less than 8 centimeters tall, that's less than a cigarette in length. The Nokia 6750 was the company's first smartphone with the Symbian OS and it also was the first Nokia phone with a built-in camera, one of VGA resolution. It was even featured in the movie Minority Report. The Nokia 6108 is an oddball device which we see in person for the first time. Meant for the Chinese market where people would likely draw a text message in Chinese characters quicker than type it in Latin, it offered a touch-sensitive area under its flappable keypad. A stylus is stuck inside its back allowing you to quickly take it out and scribble on the designated area. It would even recognize all the characters from the Latin alphabet so it's perfectly usable outside of China. Successor to the Sony Ericsson P800, the P900 could have its flip removed and it could be used as a touch-enabled PDA. A classic business smartphone, the Nokia 6600 was the most advanced phone by the manufacturer when it launched in 2003. It had a built-in VGA camera, Bluetooth and a ran on Symbian OS. The Hutchinson's NEC E808 is a device made specifically for 3's network in the UK. It's a huge clamshell with a rather large color screen meant to allow you access to Hutchinson's 3G services. And 3, by the way, was the first carrier to launch a commercial 3G network in the UK. The Siemens Zilibri line is full of weird phones and one of them is the Zilibri 3. It's meant to be worn around the neck and it doesn't even have a proper keyboard. You can imagine how hard it was to punch in the numbers, not to mention the overly confusing menus inherent to Zilibri phones. We can already guess why this phone is in such good condition. In 2003, Siemens was already dragging behind competition in terms of its phone specs and phones like the M55 and the SL55 didn't stand a chance against the heating competition. Here you can see the M55 and the SL55 with the latter having an interesting camera add-on. Unfortunately, it worked painfully slow and didn't have a live viewfinder on the phone screen. The Nokia 6630 was Nokia's first 3G smartphone and it was the company's flagship device when it was released in 2004. It had a 1.3 megapixel camera and it even offered video recording but quality was far from stellar. It made use of the RS-MMC type of memory cards and it shipped with a 64 megabyte card. 
One of the features that made the Sony Ericsson P910 stand out from the P900 was the QWERTY keypad on the inner side of the flip. It also supported the new back then Memory Stick Pro Duo cards. When it was introduced in 2004, the Motorola Razr V3 immediately set the standard for sleek design. Its successor, the Razr V3i, had a better camera and improved displays. It also supported micro SD cards, paving the way for what was to become the industry's sole memory card standard. The original Razer V3 was so popular that in the four years of its existence, it sold in a total of 130 million units, which is about four times as any of the iPhone 3Gs. The Nokia 1110 was also launched in 2005 and perhaps remains the best-selling phone of all times, with around 250 million units sold around the globe. The Nokia N91 was the most advanced music phone at that time. It integrated a miniature 4GB hard drive. The dedicated music keys on the keypad cover and a 3.5mm audio jack made it an awesome iPod competitor. Its updated Black Edition had Wi-Fi connectivity, an 8GB hard drive and stereo Bluetooth support. The Nokia 9300i followed in the steps of the Nokia Communicator series, though it was slightly cheaper and it didn't bear the branding. When closed, it looked like a cumbersome phone, while when open, it resembled a small laptop. It didn't have a camera, but it did have Wi-Fi connectivity and an open web browser. It also could open and edit Office documents. The final phone we have here today is the Samsung X830, which sports a rather unusual design. What looked like an oversized lipstick on the outside was a proper phone on the inside. The unusual scroll wheel is actually quite nice to use, though the limited internal memory means it has limited use as a music player. So, there you have it. That was some 15 years or so worth of mobile history condensed into one easy to swallow time travel pill. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We don't know what the future will bring, but we sure hope it's as intriguing as the history we went through just now. And we hope that GSMarena.com will be around for at least another 15 years, reporting as phones evolve even further.